Despite the popularity of instant messaging and video calling apps, if we have a mobile phone, then we have a phone number. There are also desk phones or company phones that are not mobiles but have phone numbers. If we're developing a system that works with phone numbers, we'll probably need to store them in a database. But are they really numbers? Is there a better way to store them? In this video, I'll demonstrate a common way that phone numbers are stored in an SQL database and one issue with doing it this way. We'll then look at a better way to store phone numbers, see the SQL to do this, and then discuss how I recommend we handle the formatting of phone numbers. Let's get started. Welcome to the Database Star YouTube channel, the place for developers looking to improve their database and SQL skills. When we think of storing a phone number in a database, we often think of storing this as an integer or a number field. Here's how we could do this in MySQL. The concept is the same in other databases, with the only difference being the data type used. We'll create a simple customer table. It's got a customer name and a phone number. It's just a simple table to demonstrate the concept. We'll define this phone number field as a big int field, which is short for big integer and is a whole number. This statement looks good, so let's run it. We can see the table is created. Now let's add some data to this table. Here's how we could add a new record. We have a simple insert statement to insert a customer record with a phone number. We can run this statement and see it is successful. Now we run a select query to see the record in the table, which we can see here. The phone number seems to be displayed okay. What about the kinds of phone numbers that start with zero? These are popular here in Australia, as all mobile numbers begin with zero. Other countries may have a similar concept. Here's another insert statement that inserts another customer with a phone number that starts with zero. We can run this statement and see that it is successful. No issues so far. Now let's select from the table again. We can see our second row here. However, notice that the zero at the start or the leading zero has been removed. This has happened because the number fields don't care if there is a zero at the start. For numbers, the value of 0, 1 is the same as 1, for example. This makes sense for numbers, but not for phone numbers. It won't work. Missing digits mean the phone number is incorrect. So how can we resolve this? If we think about a phone number, it's a unique identification number for a phone, which just so happens to be numeric. When we store other numbers, like product prices or customer order values, we sometimes perform arithmetic or maths on them, such as adding them together finding the average or the max or min values. Other ID values that are numbers, such as primary keys, are often generated automatically by the database. However, we don't need to do this for phone numbers. We don't add two phone numbers together or find the maximum phone number from a list. How does this help us? This realization means that we should store the number as a text value and not as a number. We don't need to perform maths on a phone number so there's no problem with number functions. Also, if we store it as text, we can store any leading zeros without them being removed, like in our earlier example. This means we store the column as a varchar or a varchar2 if we're using Oracle. Back in MySQL, we can recreate the table with the phone number field as a varchar. How large should the field be? If you think of your country, maybe you know that phone numbers could be 10 or 12 digits. There may also be a country code, but it's up to you whether you store this in this column or a separate column. If you have access to existing data in your database or some other source, you may be able to analyze it. So how many characters should you have? I think around 25 or 30 should be enough. For this example, we'll go with a value of 25. We'll add this inside the varchar brackets. Now we create the table. The table is created, so let's insert some data. We'll test this by inserting the same records as the earlier example. However, because it's a text value this time, we need to enclose the phone number values inside single quotes. We run this first statement, which is successful. Now let's run the second insert statement, with the leading zero. We enclose it in single quotes, then run the statement. It has been inserted successfully. We can run a SELECT statement to see the data. We can see the results here. The values look the same as what we inserted. We can also see the zero at the start of the record here, meaning it has not been removed when we inserted it. What about formatting? 
Sometimes you may want to format your phone numbers with dashes, spaces, or brackets. If this was stored as a number, you can't do this in your database because these characters are not numbers. But now that it's stored as text, it's something you could do. You can add some logic into your database, such as in a stored procedure, to transform an inserted value into a specific format. However, the formatting of a phone number is a way to display a phone number to people who use a system. I recommend leaving the formatting of a phone number up to the application or user interface. Let the database store the phone number as a pure text value. Allow the application to handle the brackets, spaces, dashes and other characters you want to use to format. Also, because the phone number is a string, it's easy to perform string manipulation to add these characters where they are needed. So, in summary, store phone numbers as text and not as a number. A length of 25 should be enough, but you can look at existing data in your system if you have it, and leave any formatting of phone numbers up to the UI. If you want to see other recommendations on how to store certain data, take a look at my video on a good way to store address data here. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.